Thank you very, very much. Uh, these are the first words I have uttered today. <laughs> and you can understand why. Uh, literally this morning, uh, I woke up uh, uh, without any voice at all. And I said, oh my God, I have to give a commencement address and I can't speak. <laughs> uh, so if, in a few instants, I sound like a 64-year-old senator in puberty. <laughs> you will forgive me. Uh, I have this enormous power that you have given me all of a sudden. I'm going to really use this microphone big time today and hope I make it through this. Uh, nor normally, uh, I would be full body and full throat in the passion of what I'm trying to share with you. Uh, I hope today just the ideas uh, carry that passion. Um, and I'm grateful to you for bearing with me. I didn't want to miss this. After all, you've given me more power than I've ever had as a United States Senator because I am all that stands between you and your degrees. <laughs> Now, since this is an election year, and you can vote, it is providential that this will be short. Uh, let me uh, begin by uh, just thanking uh, Mary Grant, your president. What a wonderful, wonderful president you have. She this institution uh, to her roots. She knows what it means to live and work in the virtues. Uh, she knows firsthand the value of a liberal arts education and the unbelievable potential for greatness that exists in every single one of you. And she lives and breathes that. Uh, she is proof, proof positive of what MCLA grads become and can do and whether it's the classrooms in Burdock Hall or, or the MCLA Gallery, uh, her love for this institution and her love for the students here is evident in every initiative and project that the school undertakes. I also want to congratulate each of the very distinguished fellow awardees of honorary degrees. Each of them, Arlindo, Lola, and Donald have made their mark at the school uh, and in this community in very, very different ways. But it makes perfect sense for MCLA to honor them today because they represent uh, what this school is all about, the mastery in one's chosen field, as well as lifelong learning, lifelong commitment to innovation and creativity, and most importantly, giving back to one's community. Uh, those are the hallmarks of an MCLA education, and the principals installed in all of you, the graduating class. So I celebrate with them this distinguished honorary degree, and I thank you. I also want to thank a couple of good friends of mine, and hope that with all these thank yous, I'm not exhausting the full extent of this address. Uh, but I do want to thank uh, Senator Ben Downing and Reverend and Dan Mosley, uh, the Birchers and all of Western Massachusetts. We're very lucky to have their voices reminding our colleagues in Boston that Massachusetts doesn't end at 495. <laughs> and uh, they do a great job. an MCLA grad, which automatically makes him the smartest member of the House of Representatives, <laughs> or so he tells me. Now, I was told that uh, in honor of today, a book, a book is being placed in the library in my name, 
And I, I find that a little bit embarrassing because that, that book will have already spent more time in the library or college than I did. <laughs> um, I, I, know, I do know that you have a, a huge choice for who should speak here today. I'm told that you really were desperate to find a really sort of wealthy guy with a full head of hair <laughs> who was all over TV and who desperately wanted to be president. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Don, Donald Trump was not available. <laughs> so here I am. But uh, I am proud to stand in front of you as someone who won over 59 million votes for the presidency, more than any Democrat who has ever run for president before, more than anyone else except you know who. Uh, well, that, that, that's how I felt about it until I learned uh, that uh, Five million more people voted this past week for David Archuleta on American Idol. <laughs> so you got to put these things, you got to put things in perspective in life, folks. Yeah, you have you have an amazing legacy here, uh, found, founded in uh, 1894 as North Adams Normal School which I found kind of interesting because I'm not sure what parent wanted to send their kids to the abnormal school <laughs> other than the parents of children at Hampshire College. I'm going to get a little day in here. Um, I, 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 I did a little research on your speakers at commencements and I know that uh, last year Attorney General Martha Coakley was here and before that it was my good friend Ted Kennedy uh, and I couldn't believe the big name that the school got as its first commencement speaker back in 1894 John McCain <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know when you run, run for president nowadays it's very tough they ask you any kind of question in the world. And of course, the famous, famous question is boxers or briefs? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I won't tell you what I said, but Barack Obama recently said, well, I wear both because I look great in both. <laughs> then they asked John McCain, they asked John McCain, and he said, depends. <laughs> I know, I know that uh, whatever you call this school through the years, uh, what has always been true is uh, that you've had a refusal to stand idly by while the world changes. And uh, there are a lot of uh, times, when, whether it's been 1894, the height of the Industrial Revolution, uh, and Massachusetts' is economic might in our factories, uh, or 2008, where we have globalization and the technological revolution which pose unbelievable new challenges. Uh, you are always moving those times. And I know MCLA is now becoming known across America as a center for robotic art. Uh, where you, you apparently are perfecting robots that act like people. Uh, I thought I was a little hurt to find out that when MCLA professors teach the students how to make a robot speak, they show tapes of me giving a speech. <laughs> um, 